Hello, and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. This year's Brit Awards are announced with Adele, Coldplay and Justin Bieber scooping prizes. While Leonardo DiCaprio's Oscar history has everyone saying it's time for this performance in The Revenant. And a peek inside the stunning French castle on the market for 9 million euros that comes with a garden full of Picassos. Thanks for joining us. Adele is the queen of the Brit Awards. She won four prizes, including Best British Solo Artist and Best Album. The star also received Best British Single and the Global Success Award. The show also featured an emotional tribute to David Bowie, led by Annie Lennox and his friend Gary Oldman. On the 10th of January this year, the world was stunned and shaken by the news that David Bowie had suddenly passed away. I suspect that everyone is still trying to process this sadly unexpected event. Even if they didn't know him personally, many people must feel as if things will never be quite the same again. The ceremony was opened by Coldplay, who gave a colourful performance of their single Hymn for the Weekend. They went on to win Best British Group, making them the most successful band in the ceremony's history. Chris Martin and co now have nine trophies to their name. We're very grateful and we'd like to dedicate this to all the young men and women musicians in refugee camps around the world. They could be us and we could be them, so we send them our love and thank you so much for giving us our job. Other awards went to James Bay for Best Male and Australian psych rock band Tame and Parlour who picked up Best International Group. Justin Bieber won Best International Male. I'm really appreciative. That's all. Now, will it finally be his year? Leonardo DiCaprio is the favourite to win at this weekend's Oscars. The former child star turned respected cinema heavyweight is nominated in the Best Actor category for The Revenant. He's been racking up accolades all season. Over the course of his almost 30-year career, he's been nominated four times, but he's never won an Oscar. Before the big night, let's take a look back at his performances through the years with Olivia salazar Winspear. Ravaged by the elements and driven to despair, it's a savage version of Leonardo DiCaprio who takes on the lead role in The Revenant. Good as much preparation as I possibly could. Like I said, very little is written about this time period, so it was almost like doing a science fiction movie. I've always been driven and attracted to working with filmmakers that can transfer a very specific, powerful cinematic vision. His performance as Hugh Glass, a 19th century fur trapper, has already earned him a Golden Globe. Has been incredibly consistent and taking risk and not being seduced by you know, uh, things that could be very obvious, you know. The role is light years away from the romantic lead the world fell in love with in 1996 when he was a modern Romeo, lovelorn on Venice Beach. Good night. Good night. A year later came planetary fame with Titanic. Open your eyes. A film that was hard to shake off. It's someone who, in a way, had to overcome being a pretty face. He really paid for Titanic when he was king of the world. But he's made intelligent choices and he continues to make intelligent choices. Later, Guillaume Canet acted alongside DiCaprio in The Beach, Danny Boyle's thriller about the search for paradise on Thailand's shores. Then Leo took the plunge teaming up with director Martin Scorsese for four of his films to critical acclaim, their latest collaboration being The Wolf of Wall Street. Leonardo DiCaprio. It got him a number of accolades from the critics, but not the long-awaited Oscar. The industry nod still eludes the man who decided to be an actor at just six years old. When you watch great films at a very early age, it 
burns this imprint in your mind that you live on the shoulders of giants. DiCaprio's also put his fame to good use in recent years, campaigning for the environment, meeting with the Pope and the UN's Ban Ki-moon. Having made his name among the greats of his generation, movie insiders say Leo should now be preparing his thank you speech. And the Oscar ceremony is on Sunday evening. Now to a dark chronicle of one Iranian woman's efforts to maintain both her freedom and the custody of her child. Writer-director Ida Panahandez Nahid is a promising debut featuring an excellent lead turn from Sarah Bayat. Sanam Shantia reports now. A dreary account of a woman riddled with moral choices. In this drama, directed by Iranian filmmaker Ida Panahande, we witness Nahid's struggle to maintain both her freedom and the custody of her child, a daily reality for divorced women in the Islamic Republic. Well, unlike the image that Europeans have of Middle Eastern women, who are actually strong, it's women that face overwhelming pressures in our society. Women have to act like shields for their families and tolerate these problems in silence. The film was cheered at the Cannes Film Festival in 2015 for breaking gender stereotypes. The female protagonist, Nahid, is strong and unyielding, while her ex-husband is immersed in conflict and has a gambling problem. For the Madame Bovary-inspired director, capturing the travails of women in a largely conservative society was an intuitive process. Working here may appear to be challenging to the Western eye, but for us this is our country, our culture, our heritage and tradition. And we were born with these traditions, grew up with them and will die with them. So for us it's not particularly perplexing. For director Panahanda, the cloudy grey ambience of a town bordering the Caspian Sea reflects the innermost being of her characters, above all her heroine. Thematically, the debut feature bears a striking resemblance to Asghar Farhadi's Oscar-winning film A Separation. Nahid even borrows the talent of supporting actress Sara Bayad, putting the movie on a par with the works of some of the country's best-known talents. Let's head now to the Royal Guard region in the south of France to discover a national treasure that's been hidden for years. The Chateau de Castille is not just any 13th century mansion. It's home to frescoes by Pablo Picasso, classed as protected historic monuments by the French state. The gates have been shut to the public for four decades, but now the chateau is up for sale. France 24's Catherine Clifford takes us for a peek inside. A glimpse behind the gates of the Chateau de Castille is a rare treat, not just because of the 13th century architecture within two hectares of grounds, but for a unique treasure. Engraved on these walls, frescoes by Pablo Picasso. Picasso's frescoes are generally very rare, and to have them in such a magical location is really something special. Picasso loved this place. He came here often. It's one of the few places he returned to because of personal attachment. He even tried to buy the chateau. Picasso lived between Cannes, Mougins and Valoris on the Côte d'Azur in the south of France. He was a friend of the Chateau de Castille's owner of the time. Seen here, Douglas Cooper, a British art historian and collector. There was a new concreting procedure which had been invented in Norway, and the first trials were done on the facade of a building, an architecture college in Barcelona a few years before. I was very enthusiastic about it, and one day Picasso told me, give me your walls, and I'll do you the same thing at your place. For the past 40 years, the chateau has been hidden from the public eye. Today, we're able to take a peek inside, but only because it's now for sale. 
The family hired the American interior designer Dick Dumas, and all the decoration we can see is his. So already that's very rare to pair a protected monument with such a polished interior design. The dining room, pillars, facade and of course the Picasso frescoes have all been classed as protected historic monuments by the French state. Treasures hidden away from sight in the rural guard region. Even in this nearby village, few have been let in on the secret. Any idea what it's like inside? What's the asking price? Um, nine. Nine million euro? Yes, I think so. Is that right? Is that a lot? Well, for me, yes. I can't afford it. <laughs> Even the mayor hasn't made it through the chateau's gates. Nine million euros is the equivalent of 30 years of the local authority's budget. I can't see any local authorities being able to afford such a high price for the castle. And that's a real shame, because we could have had a museum. But I think a cultural project is going to remain a pipe dream. Several collectors have already shown an interest. The next owner will be sure to lounge in the shade of Picasso's frescoes. But will they finally open the chateau's gates? We can dream, can't we? We're going to leave you with pictures from the vibrant Gucci show at Milan Fashion Week, which goes on until next week. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.